Okay, so now we have Iago making his first kind of connection with the audience. Um, Rodrigo leaves and he's alone. And Iago's a really interesting character, particularly in his soliloquies, which are speeches alone. These are um, characters speaking to themselves. But I tell you, my experience of this play, and I'm haunted by this play, um, particularly when you see it, there is an affinity that Iago has with the audience. Uh, you know, a really great Iago. Um, yeah, I'm just thinking, I saw one recently with Mark Rylance, but I've seen, I'm trying to find another one in my mind's eye. I once saw just, does any great Iago starts to persuade and um, uh, evoke something in the audience as well. So even though the soliloquy, like formally, is the character thinking to themselves, I always get this really odd feeling with a great Iago that he's actually talking to us and knows he's in a play. Um, Rodrigo leaves and he looks at us and gets a laugh right away. Thus do I ever make my fool my purse. My fool, Rodrigo, is an idiot and he tells us. He's an idiot. He uses him for money and his plan. For I, my own gain knowledge, should profane if I would time expend with such a snipe, but for my sport and profit. So here we get that, you know, he had, it's, a, it's the game, the fun, the competition is all he's about, but also money. Um, Rodrigo's the one funding this. And um, profit can mean all sorts of things. It could be money. It could be also just uh, gain, strategy. Uh, and Iago is showing us this. He says it again and again. And again, a really good actor can um, bring a calm, quiet, dark hatred to this line. I hate the more. And it is thought abroad that twixt my sheets he has done my office. I know not if it be true, but I, from your suspicion in that kind, will do as if for surety. Okay, so obviously I hate them more. Here's a reason he gives. There's a rumor, the metaphor is, uh, doing your office in, be between the sheets, that he's um, slept with Amelia. We hear about this later. I don't know if it's true or not, but even suspecting is as good enough as true. Suspicion equals truth. And you, you have to understand that this, these, this hatred, this vacuum of energy and hatred that he has is what he can do to manipulate others, whether it's the audience or, or Othello. You know, Coleridge said he had a, a motiveless malignity um, that isn't true. I mean, Iago gives us all sorts of reasons for why he hates Othello. It's just never really satisfactory. It's really difficult to believe him. Um, and that's what I find really particularly interesting. He's saying things to you. He's saying things to himself. But are these the reason why he's doing this? What's more interesting to me is just even thinking, thinking that his wife's cheated with Othello is enough. I think him knowing his own self allows him to manipulate others, and this will prove really important later in the play. He holds me well, the better shall my purpose work on him. Um, you know, Othello trusts him. People trust him. Honest Iago, he tells the truth. Cassio's a proper man. Mm, let me see it, let me see now. He thinks out loud. I like that about him. To get his place and to plume up my will is double knavery. How, how, let's see. After some time to abuse Othello's ear that he is too familiar with his wife. He hath a person and a smooth disposed to be suspected framed to make woman false. Cassio is handsome. Note, people who cast 
we have to pay attention to how Shakespeare describes these characters. Um, and he does it in a very different way than, let's say, Tennessee Williams. Uh, he's not brick beautiful, but he's handsome at very least. Um, and it's enough because women could cheat. The moor is of a free and open nature that thinks men honest that but seem so. That's great. I mean, really good, like, metaphor of theater. We see this again with Edmund and Lear. Um, those characters that can perform and become things for other characters, um, it's the metaphor of the theater. And we think that just because things look, this is a very uh, almost uh, cliche theme in Shakespeare, appearance and reality, um, I would say performance might be a more interesting he performs honesty as well as tenderly be led by the nose as asses are again animal imagery maybe again racist i have it all of a sudden he's like okay i got it it's engendered that is not there by chance it's engendered it's inside of me it's made helen knight must bring this monstrous birth to the world's light He's going, his plan is going to give birth to a monster, a devil. His ideas, his plans. <coughs> he, what is inside of him is a kind of monster. And Othello says this later. Um, what I want you to think about with Iago is how differently he manipulates um, than some of the other characters you'll encounter in the course. How his language... Um, can move from prose to poetry, how he can adapt himself to the person and the situation so well, and how his image, how his imagery and the simplicity of some of his uh, arguments has a haunting power in you. And finally, a, a wonderful actor, AO2 Form, who's performing this goes beyond the language to persuade you, to take you on a journey, to make you really buy into this character, Iago.